Psalm 122. I was glad when they said unto me, We will go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand in thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself. For thither the tribes go up, even the tribes of the Lord, to testify unto Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there is the seat of judgment, even the seat of the house of David. O pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and plenteousness within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sakes, I will wish thee prosperity. Yea, because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do thee good. This final short homily of Lenten talks, I've returned to Bolton by Boland. I'm standing in what is known as the Pudsey Chapel, another place of grand memorials and commemorations, both to the Pudsey family and also to the Littledales, whose interaction is bound up in a family history of inheritance and marriage. Such a display is perhaps best illustrated by the various armorials that hang around us here, the different heraldic devices reacting with each other as fortunes waxed and waned, some displaying a pedigree and heritage of great significance, the coats of arms of many families on display in a single herald. The psalm for today encourage us to honour the house of God, the place where people gather to pray. Here may be in this chapel, surrounded by the things we see around us, in some ways, such a gathering of objects puts us into the centre of a crucial part of our belief. Christianity has an interesting relationship with objects. Some places of worship, directed with huge works of art, filled with wonder and with beauty. Others seeking simplicity in worship in far less formal buildings. The practicalities of seating and warmth being the centre of their attention. Here, in this Pudsey Chapel, surrounded by heraldic past, we can be forgiven for thinking such things have little to do with pure Christianity. The destiny of an ancient family, displaying who have been their forebears, not quite what we might expect. Yet Matthew's Gospel, even itself, begins the story of Jesus' life with a witness and an armorial all of its own. The declaration of the ancestry of Christ being of such importance that before the story of the Incarnation begins, a lineage is unfolded to us. For those of us whose lineage is about as obscure as could be possible, the grandeur of such boards here in church may be outside anything that we can ever imagine, yet they are still fascinating. Who lived and died in this very place? Who is buried here? How they lived and why they are commemorated? Perhaps more importantly, what place they have here in this chapel? So place itself becomes important. The people who have been here before us become part of our worshipping community as we meet here still hundreds and hundreds of years later. Christians, even from earliest records of worship, meeting in the catacombs, not entirely, I understand, because of persecution, but through choice. The remnants of the saints being so much part of their early worship. It means, too, that in this chapel, we deal with the crucial belief that we are not alone. These boards above us remind us that these people have come to this place to worship long before we have gathered. Maybe we know some of their stories. Maybe we know that some were holy and that some were far from it. Some, perhaps, determine that their faith would influence their every decision, and others for whom faith was not so real. 
we can maybe never truly know, never fully understand who these people here were. But what we can say is that they walked enough of a Christian pathway to desire a resting place within these holy walls. It's a salutary lesson perhaps to us all as we hear the words of the psalm that exhorts us to come to a place of worship, the house of the Lord. It is maybe easy to stand in judgment as we imagine the lives of those commemorated here, maybe cynical about their life experiences of a bygone age. But maybe too it's something else. Maybe it's a reminder that we too make a part of the history of sacred spaces. We may not have an armorial such as these. We may not be a family of any significance, but we become part of the history we see around us. The theologian Odo Castle used the illustration of skeins of wool, which are bound and wound together to create a fabric. I like to think that the fabric of one colour is indeed beautiful, but what is magnificent is the weaving together of different colours to create a pattern. The armorials, so the weaving together of certain families, but the greater cloth of heaven is so much wider. We come, as Yeats suggests, in the light and the half-light, the cloth of heaven, the whole great company of God's people, united and bound together for his great purpose. As we move towards Passion Tide, may we continue to be bound together in the love of Christ. We beseech the Almighty God, mercifully to look upon thy people, that by thy great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore, both in body and soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.